All right, before we get into recaps, let's take a look at the bowl game conference records. Now, this is kind of interesting, Cam. We're going to start it off with the Big Ten. Now, they're undefeated as it stands, and they still have one game left to play, and that's tomorrow, the Outback Bowl between Michigan and South Carolina. Cam, are you surprised by this 7-0 record? You know, this is really interesting here, and I, what really sticks out to me, the coaching staff in the Big Ten, mm -hmm. Paul Chris, Wisconsin, Penn State and Franklin, Ohio State and Meyer. You can't look over that fact, and also... Some of these teams kind of had chips on their shoulders here, most notably the Buckeyes. They had a fantastic game against USC, really cemented themselves as that best team to not make the playoff. And then you have some somewhat surprising performances. I was actually pretty shocked at how well Michigan State mm -hmm. played in that game. And, of course, Luke Falk wasn't playing the quarterback position for Washington State. Maybe that had an effect on things. But even you look at Purdue and Iowa, Pretty good head coaches there as well. So overall, not too, too surprising. But when you see that stat there on the board, 7-0, and and nobody else is undefeated, pretty surprising. It's impressive and also kind of surprising that there is not a Big Ten team in the playoff. Mm. All right, moving on. Big 12, 5-2, and, and that is wins with Kansas State, Iowa State, Texas, Oklahoma State, and TCU, and the two losses with Texas Tech, West Virginia. Upcoming game, we got Oklahoma taking on Georgia. Not a bad stat line for the Big 12, Cam. Yeah, absolutely not. And look, Iowa State, three wins against top 25 teams this mm -hmm. year. Matt Campbell, I am so glad that he is remaining there. And look, I think so Iowa do. State and the Cyclones are going to be in very good hands in years to come I with, so with Campbell there and the energy that he brings to that school. Good to hear that he is remaining there. Oklahoma State and Mason Rudolph, MVP honors in that game. Really a fantastic performance. And then TCU, that rally, if you will, against Stanford really, really shows the grittiness and the ability to bounce back from adversity. Mm -hmm for the Horn Frogs. So, solid performance so far for the Big 12. Fantastic stuff for sure. Up next, ACC, they do not have a winning record. They're posted up at 4 and 5 with wins from Duke, Florida State, Wake Forest, and NC State and losses with Boston College, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Louisville and with that Miami loss last night. Upcoming game, Clemson taking on Bama. Now, I honestly, Cam, I was kind of surprised by this. The ACC seemed very dominant this season, mm -hmm. and to see a four and five record, and you know, it could be, you know, make it to 500, but with the way things go, Bama could be Clemson, could make it four and six. I don't know, Cam. Not too hot in the ACC. Yeah, I'm looking at the losses here, Lana, and they kind of stick out to me, most notably Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. Louisville, and Miami. And Miami last night, not a great performance on the offensive side of the ball. Way too many turnovers from Malik Rogier. And for Louisville, I thought if Lamar Jackson just didn't throw four interceptions or, you know, be essentially careless with the football, mm -hmm. You know, they sh probably should have won that game. Yeah. They got a not enough offensive production in that matchup there. But the turnovers were really the end doing, uh, the, uh, the undoing, if you will, of the Cardinals. And then Virginia Tech and Justin Fuente, you know, it was a, it was a competitive game for them. But four and five for the ACC. And if you look at the collective body of work that they have done so far this year, Lana, like you talked about, it is somewhat surprising. Not as surprising as this next record, though. All right, the SEC, one and three camps. So they still have a lot of games yet to be played over the next couple of days. The one solo win is coming from the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The losses are from Missouri, Texas A&M, and Kentucky. So these upcoming games, we've got Michigan, South Carolina. We've got Auburn taking on UCF, undefeated. We have Notre Dame taking on LSU, Oklahoma taking on Georgia, and Clemson taking on Bama. Like I said, still a huge slate of games left to be played. Do you see the SEC coming out of this with a winning record? Look, it's tough to say. I'm going to say yes, but I'm not confident about mm -hmm. it. I think Michigan should get a victory against South Carolina, so I guess that's one loss. But you could, I could see Auburn getting a victory here. I could see LSU getting a victory over Notre Dame. I think Georgia has a really good shot to mm -hmm. beat Oklahoma. You look at the defense for Oklahoma, it's susceptible. And then Alabama has a very real shot to upset Clemson. I mean, let's face it, this is almost like a conference game for it Alabama is. playing Clemson These two teams in the semifinal. Know each other. Exactly. So it's one of those deals where I could see the SEC ripping off a few wins here in these upcoming games. But for Mississippi State, good victory for them. Shocking loss with Missouri. I was really inspired by the way in which they finished their campaign mm -hmm. this year because. Look, Barry Odom was on the hot seat at one point this year, but they ripped off a ton of wins, and I thought, okay, Missouri's going to ride some momentum into their bowl game. 
and they looked a little hapless in that one. So SEC at one and three, they certainly have a shot to kind of recover here and get a winning record. All right, up last, we have the Pac-12 coming in at one and seven, Cam. Now, no more games left to be played for the Pac. This must hurt you. This hurts me a lot being an Oregon grad. I've always said that the Pac-12 is very, very underrated, one of the most underrated conferences in college football, but then I take a look at the stat line cam and I'm kind of eating my words. So the solo win coming from Utah losses. Oregon got blown out by Boise State, UCLA, Arizona, Stanford, Washington State, Arizona State, USC, Washington. Part of me wants to be impressed that, you know, eight teams made it to a bowl game, but that one and seven record cam, it, it's flat out embarrassing. Perhaps the best coast isn't the West Coast anymore. You know, I mean, look, Maybe. we have a reaction poll for the folks at home. We want you weighing in just how bad is the Pac-12 right now? Are you just sad or are you LOLing at this point? You got a couple of votes there for your options. And look, for the Pac-12, yeah, I mean, this is pretty shocking to me. Uh, Sam Darnold, I think, really sticks out in that yeah, USC it was a game. Disappointing performance at best. Really not a good game for him. You have to wonder, is he going to come out into the draft? The pass protection for USC was not very good, no doubt about that. UCLA, obviously, Rosen not mm -hmm. playing in that one. Stanford, they kind of coughed one away. So, yeah, I mean, there are some gross performances here for the Pac-12. And in terms of, I guess, the long term, I don't think it's all that you know doom and gloom. Look at how many teams made a bowl game. Yeah. I mean, you just got to look on the surface here. You know, there are some talented teams out there. I think it's kind of those deals where they just got a bad draw. I yeah, think. It, I think that could definitely be the potential cam. But I want to know, so if the Pac-12, we're saying, you know, they won the worst conferences in the league, obviously one and eight, blah, blah, blah. Makes me want to take a look at the Big Ten now. So if the Big Ten sitting there undefeated, a potential to be undefeated at eight and no with Michigan taking on South Carolina tomorrow, is the Big Ten the king of college football cam? Wow. I mean, you look at the Big Ten this year, and it seemed like they were cannibalizing themselves. Penn State, mm -hmm. Michigan State, Ohio State, Michigan, all these teams, they are, one, rich in just the brand itself, it right? Mm -hmm. And then, two, pretty darn good head coaches in that conference. You have to look at things, and actually, Lynn, it's interesting because in one of the episodes of the Cam Rogers Show earlier in the fall, I kind of talked about how the SEC was kind of becoming a little brother to the Big Ten because of just the resurgence that we're seeing and the quality recruiting that we're getting in the Big Ten too has a big effect on this. Is the Big Ten king of the FBS? I'm gonna throw up my wow face. I'm gonna say we're getting close.